Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, oh my gosh, we are back with another banger. And guys, the next guest is just so unbelievable. Let me tell you something. I met Laura in university. I'm actually trying to send her the link at the same time while I speak. Laura is an amazing performer. I'm going to tell you straight up, one of the best performers I've seen. Like I would say, of all the performers I've ever seen, top three, guarantee she's up there like i'm not even gonna say top 10 top three like i'm serious like she could be number one she's just absolutely unbelievably talented and uh you know what's great about her is like she's really just independent man i know because after university she's been doing these shows on youtube uh where you know she actually just does her own uh production and i love that man you know those are my kind of people so uh laura actually the first time i had any awareness of this amazing woman was when she was on yo tv if you guys remember yo tv laura was the chick who was holding it down uh you know yo tv was really cool when you were growing up and i always was like wow that chick is so cool you know like you know so far ahead so like you know the kind of person you'd never sort of interact with and then when i got to university i was like hey hang on that looks like the girl that used to be on your tv then she was in my classroom i was like whoa she is the girl on your tv oh my gosh so it was actually quite um crazy to think that you know we were in the same um you know uh, environment uh, let me just uh, resend her here it is. Hi, Laura. Here it is. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, I uh, failed. Why? Um, and so you know, uh, having her in the same uh, like classroom was like I can't believe it, man. This is just so unbelievable because. Like she was like years ahead of the game like for real and um you know we're gonna learn about you know what it is she's been up to because after university i actually saw her on tv she started smashing she just continued to smash she was doing these adverts and you know she's she, she's just so talented guys like she can smash comedy she can smash like that deep drama she can you know hit shakespeare if she wants to she's called to she can do that dark thriller psycho crazy you know she can do that she can do anything man i'm telling you she can probably do action too um yeah no lara is a uh, kingpin in the game and i can't wait for you guys to uh see you know how dynamic she really is and you know the kind of impact that you know she's gonna leave in the industry and has left in the industry uh, i think anybody that's worked with laura has really worked with someone that they can't afford <laughs> seriously like she's really that great oh there's laura oh hey 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 hey, hey. hello Sorry. laura the process was simple but i don't know <laughs> I didn't have pro. Sorry. Anyway, I'm here. Hi. Sorry about the delay. Oh, no, 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 no. No problem. No problem. Hey, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Wow. Gee, so good to see you. Wow. You look amazing. <laughs> that was very kind. Thank you. Um, I am not so prepared. Let me just pretend I am. That's a bit better. <laughs> okay. <Thank you. laughs> I haven't it's seen okay. you in a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. Jeez. How's life treating you? Life is good in a nutshell. Life okay. is good. And you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life's good. Life's great. And so um, you're teaching? You... What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm teaching. I'm teaching English. And yeah, it's been quite a in in Taiwan. Oh wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you still in Cape Town? I am. Yeah. Oh, nice! Wow, you, mm. you you have a very beautiful background. It's like wow, geez, I feel like I'm in a movie, like I'm watching really? a movie. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So so okay, so you uh are you still like in performance and theater and filmmaking? I haven't unfortunately done theater since COVID. Um oh. and in that time I then had a baby who's now three. Um, wow. but I have been doing a bit of TV and a bit of, um, lots of writing and lots of, uh, developing of new show ideas and film. Yeah. Gee, that's amazing. Yeah. I remember, I think last time, uh, I, I, I approached you, like I was trying to do a production and I think you were like going to have the baby or about to have the baby. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> now you, so, so now he's three years old. Mm-hmm. Jeez, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a lot. What's it like <laughs> to be a mom? It is um, a huge adjustment, oh. and it is a juggle, a constant juggle between wanting to work and have a your own independent life, and wanting to be a good mom, present, patient, and gentle and calm and all those things we uh, try to be okay wow. <laughs> but it's good it's obviously i mean it's amazing he's mm. honestly incredible amazing beautiful angel child and i'm very grateful um now it's about trying to find the balance between work life and and mom life oh that's so cool that's so mm -hmm. cool yeah, I mean, like, um, I think moms are amazing. And um, I think Mother's Day is coming up. So before Mother's Day, come on and say happy Mother's Day Thanks. in advance. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so now, you know, now that you uh, are a mom, do you find that your work, like the style, maybe uh, changes? Or like, does motherhood sort of inform, like, how you think of ideas or create, you know, work? Yeah, absolutely. It definitely does. Um, well, firstly, it's like with everything, it's then your priorities are just so different. So now it really has, a work has to be really worth it to be pulled away for months on end or whatever it might be. It has to really be worth, you know, the story has to be worth it. The production has to be worth it to be away from my family now. Um, and then in terms of actually creating, I have a whole new insight into, into a whole new kind of headspace and genre of human, you know, like motherhood and, and giving birth and, and, and this, like it's a huge expansive experience. And so I definitely have a lot more to draw from. Um, mm -hmm. And then just like my own emotional capacity has just been stretched, you know, as, as it happens when you become a parent, I think so. Um, it's definitely informing my writing and and just the choices I make in general. Every, yeah, it informs everything. It really does. It's quite incredible. Wow. Okay. That's. I mean, I would think so. I would think so. Like, um, what is uh, the sort of first sort of uh, work you started maybe writing or producing, <laughs> like, you know, once you became a mother? Or are you still in the process of producing something? Since yeah, I'm, I'm still in the process. But I, I wrote, like, one of the first things I, I wrote, uh, I need to actually pick it back up. It's a, it's a show idea about, about postpartum, basically, postpartum anxiety and depression. Um, and kind of that, that transition between being just a woman and then becoming a mother and how it's like this limbo period that you have to like go through this tunnel in order to kind of come out the other side. Um, and so that's a show that I'm writing. And then I also wrote a short film for a competition that unfortunately never came to fruition, but maybe one day I can still make it um, about, it was like a science fiction kind of, a movie about the actual act of giving birth and how oh, wow. a woman is like a portal between two worlds. Wow. Wow. That's really deep. It is. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> it is deep. Yeah. So 
and how that yeah like literally we, can, we we all of us get here through this portal you know it's like this bizarre thought but it's the fact we like it's amazing a woman is a portal between the mystery where we all come from and this place you know so i think that's just a fascinating thing to explore that i hope to still be able to do yeah yeah that sounds really cool i like that it's a sci-fi like you know normally you know like i don't know i just i've seen that in south africa like normally you know writers write about like drama or you know like um uh maybe comedy um but sci-fi is not sort of like the main thing or i just don't see anybody like really you know pushing sci-fi and i love sci-fi so i'd love to see that come out like um are they are they are they are, like is the main character a mother or does are they yeah. supporting characters as well yeah they are supporting characters but I, I kept it as small as as possible so that it would be viable to make you know um mm. in terms of cast all right we'll see we'll see so many ideas and so little money <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so 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 when you when you're writing these uh, films, uh, are you writing with the budget in mind, or do you maybe sometimes just forget about it and then maybe later insert the the value of the budget? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think if you do restrict yourself the whole time with a budget, you you know you won't think big. Mm. Um, but you do also kind of have to be realistic, so you kind of. Maybe at the beginning you can, I don't know, it really depends on the project, I guess. But like I have set out in the past, for example, to make, to write a film that is affordable to make, like using as few people as possible and just doing the bare minimum, like just having as few locations, you know, really being kind of pragmatic when you write. Um, but then I'm now working on another idea that is kind of further along in the development process. And I know the budget is going to be massive. Um, right. I don't know how much, but like it's a big idea and a big, we need a huge, huge budget. So then you just have to think, okay, well, who am I going to partner with? You know, who's going to invest in this? But, I mean, it just depends on what you want to do. Like, I think if you're starting out, think big, but think practical, you know, think realistic. Mm -hmm. And sometimes having boundaries uh, does challenge you to be more creative, okay. you know. So it's not, a, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have those kind of financial restrictions, but it just depends on the project. <laughs> got you i got you mm -hmm. so what's the sort of biggest budget you sort of you know had in mind for like a film i i just i like i, I like i'm just curious as to like you know what's possible and like you know mm. what's what's necessary well i know recently in south africa um a film that was made was one of the biggest budgets ever and that was about like 30 million. Wow. Um, mm. Which is not a lot compared to dollars. You know, in okay. America, that would be 30 million dollars, but here it's 30 million rand. That's very different in terms of that. So if you, you, th you, know, you think big, you think international audience, you think international streaming. Um, but yeah, it's, it can be, it can seem like a, a lot of money. Of course, it's a lot of money, but in the film world, it's not. But in South Africa, it is. So then that's kind of been growing and growing. And then people have been seeing, I think, that in order to make shows and movies that compete with international shows and movies, we need to at least try to have as big a budget, you know, in you. order to have a chance to compete. Otherwise, why would you want to watch a South African production when you could watch an international production, which is like better quality or whatever, you know, because they've got more funding, just like anything in this country. It's like, it's so frustrating. We've got the talent, we've got everything we need here, but we just yeah. don't necessarily have the funding to make these productions, you know, even with like with sport, the sporting world, like athletes that would actually be funded properly 
can be internationally competitive, but it's just not always the case. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 so with your, with your movie that you, um, like if you, if you could have the budget that you like desire, like the ultimate budget for you, like to create this uh, film that you're writing, like how much would you need? Maybe we can speak to some people. Gosh, to be perfectly honest, I don't even know. I, I need a producer with, who's good with numbers to, to help me with that. Um, and then, Ugh, it's, I, I don't even know. I okay. imagine somewhere around there, somewhere at around 30 million. Around 30 million. Okay. And then, some, and then it, some coins lying around. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I'll speak to some people, see if they've got Bitcoin or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. 30 million. Okay. So. Um, I honestly don't know though. I'd have to, you know, I'm still in the process of like pitching and then I'm going to be writing and then I'm going to know more. Okay. Each episode will cost this much, you know, so that's just a thumb suck number for now, but gotcha. it would be big. It would be big. I'm not sure. No, I think if anybody deserves to make a film that is big, it's definitely you. Like I've seen you like your work ethic in university. Like sometimes <laughs> I just, you know, I was like, Oh my gosh, this, woman so amazing like you know you you were smashing everybody like you're extremely competitive and it was always I, amazing <laughs> really? absolutely I, I feel like i'm not but maybe it's interesting hearing it from the outside perspective you feel like you're not jeez i mean i i felt like you know in time... like audition process yeah maybe I, I'm, I'm competitive in an audition scenario but not like in like in terms of playing games, like board games, I'm never competitive. I really don't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't care about winning a, a board game. But, but then again, maybe I do. I don't know. No, like for me, I mean, I've never played board games with you. But like, um, you know, when I was um, maybe, um, maybe we had a project to do, whether it was for movement. I was actually telling the audience that uh, when you and Nikala Feng did your movement piece. I know that was like long ago. Oh, I love that though. I'm glad you remember you, it. <laughs> oh, I think everybody does because like, you know, you guys put so much into it and you guys really, I think everybody was shocked. Well, I think everybody was like, not shocked that they were surprised. They were like, geez, you guys really took it there. Like we expected <laughs> that you guys were going to take it somewhere, but you guys took it beyond and uh i I've, I've even seen you do that with um i remember we had a project in tv and we just had to write the scene and then you came through with the whole storyboard and you had graphics and you're like you know i was like hey gee i don't know if i want to submit mine because i just wrote a story you came through with like i felt like i could see your movie and uh, you know wow uh, i don't even remember I mean. that <laughs> yeah yeah you had a car it was even in color i was like geez you, you actually you actually like colored the scene and was like uh, was actually quite <laughs> amazing. I just don't know where you get you get the time, but yeah, I've always seen you as someone who's like very dedicated to you know what you do. And, yeah, um, absolutely. Well, thanks. You know, yeah. Where do you get that like kind of uh, energy? Because I think the first time I saw you on TV, you were doing your TV. You were your, the your <laughs> TV girl, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. you were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we, so did it start back then when you were on your TV, you know, like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to be like, you know, smash everything, you know, <laughs> be super dedicated. Is that where you started? Um, yeah, I guess I always knew I wanted to be out there acting and performing. I did ballet from when I was six years old and on stage doing competitions. Um, and... Yeah, I guess I've always just been quite um, dedicated and committed and quite like clear in what I what I want, knowing what I want. Um, and then it's it does it really doesn't feel like work when you love it so much. I mean that's cliche, but it's true. I remember kind of with musical theater, the course I did at Wits, um, I would practice those songs for ages, and I just it didn't feel like work. I'm learning lines for a song and I'm like practicing singing. Like that's fun. 
you know it's such fun so it just always I, I remember sometimes at VITS like in first year or second year when other students would not not rock up to class or whatever I remember just thinking like why would you bunk drama class it's like <laughs> it's like you're having so much fun you're just playing you're like playing games and uh, yeah. I don't know why you would bunk that you know so I just always loved it mm, I see I see that's amazing okay and so uh, but I mean you seem to be like like if I think of you I think of like 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 John T. Rhodes like it seems like you you were able to sort of excel at drama like 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 sometimes I, I couldn't believe in you know, I was in the same class. I felt like you know somebody made a mistake to put me here, like with you know someone so highly talented. I was like, um, you know, thank you, thank you, whoever made that mistake. And and then and then writing, you 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 know you did the screenplays that were just like you know you added the whole storyboard and, and you did that pretty well. And now musical theater. Like you seem like like an all rounder, like 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 you know, John T. Rose, he could bat, he could bowl, he could field, you know, you just like all over the show. Like, is it difficult like being able to sort of you know play multiple roles? Because like even when you're telling me about your film, uh, it seems like you know, you thinking for the producer as well while you writing it and you're still thinking about the team, it's like it's quite a multifaceted sort of role you keep. Hmm. excelling at like is that difficult yeah like, there were times where I thought gosh I'm like good at lots of things but I'm not amazing at any one thing you know what I mean like I'm not like excellent at writing and now I'm a writer like I'm not the best actress ever I'm just like good at lots of different things and I always yeah it used to kind of bother me I was like maybe maybe that's not a good thing but actually I do think it's a good thing because especially these days in my personal experience, I've had to be able to um, make my own work. And in order to make your own work, you need to have multiple skills. Um, you know, even if you look at like all these kind of young YouTube stars and whatever they are, they are planning and, and organizing and setting up the camera and scheduling and, you know, it's like it requires many different skills, not just not just presenting or not just acting. You gotta organize things. You gotta be just more savvy, I suppose. So it's it's just good to have experience in lots of different things. And I think that's also one of the things that was so great about Vits. A lot of people didn't like that they had to um, you know, do all the different things in first year, like mm. working behind behind the stage or whatever um because they thought no I just want to act or I just want to whatever but it's so good to have all that that experience at least a little bit of experience in all these different things because then you have respect for all those people you know a little bit about it you know I wish I knew more now I wish I knew so much more about like lenses and and stuff that I don't know <laughs> mm. you know I wish I knew more about the business side of it I wish I knew more about how to like write up a, the production budget because now I do, I need to call on other people. But at the end of the day, a film or a show, a play, all of it is not just one person. So even if I am uh, capable of doing multiple things, I still can't do everything and you still need a team to help to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that, that's true. That's true. And so like of all the sort of things that you, you know, you good at doing like which one is the one that you love the most because i thought i thought i thought you were a smashing performer like you, every time you you touch the stage like oh my everybody paid attention like no one was gonna be like ah you know let me yawn now let me take a break like everyone was ready like oh shit laura's on okay yeah. let's, relax. Let's, 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 let's get ready gosh um yeah i do i really love acting i really 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 love it but unfortunately, sometimes it feels like it's just not, um, it's just, it, I don't know, like, I don't get enough work, you know, I just don't get enough opportunity, I don't book enough to make it 
rewarding enough. Like I wish I was working more consistently. I've never ever worked consistently, even if you say that. And I thank you so much for saying that because there are times where I really do doubt myself and I think, am I even good at this? Because why do I keep not booking anything, you know? And that's what led me to make my own show, Chin Up. And that's what really drives me to make my own work. Because I'm just like, I feel like that's the only way to actually have longevity in this industry is to just make your own work and make your own opportunities. Wow. Okay. So <clears throat> Chin Up. Uh, I think I've seen a few of your episodes of Chin Up. But um, tell us, what, 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 what is that about? And like the, the name Chin Up, how did you come up with that? um it actually originally was called rock bottom and then i thought the name was too negative so chin up came from one of the lines that my agent in the show said to me he was like chin up keep your chin up like keep going you know and that's the attitude that people will have with you in in life in general but i think especially in this industry like just you know chin up like it's not so bad like nobody likes everybody's rejecting you the whole time but chin up chin up, chin up you know so it's kind of like that thing of just keep going and keep a chin up and maybe you'll get some success kind of thing. Um, so chin up is about being an actress in spite of the drama of it all, um, in spite of the constant rejection and, and disappointment. Um, and it's based on my real life experiences of being an actress. And I wrote, produced, directed three seasons and yeah. um, managed to get it's on Showmax in 20, when was it now? I don't even remember, 2019, 2020? Okay. I don't even know, what happened in 2020? I don't even know what's going on. What year are we in now? I don't know. Anyway, I managed to get it onto Showmax a few years ago. And that was a big achievement because I had been working on it for about five years before that. And um, I even went to New York and I won Best Actress at the New York City Film Festival for what was it called? New York City Web Fest. Sorry, long time. Oh, ago. really? That's yeah. amazing. Jeez. Yeah. So that well was done. very cool. Um, and that's like been my thing. It's been my project that I've worked on for for a long time. Um, and it also just it it showed me that I really also do enjoy writing. I do enjoy telling my stories. I love, like I've always loved observing situations in my life or in other people's lives and and seeing how hilarious or ridiculous they are <clears throat> and using them to make films. Um, so yeah, that's the one thing. And that basically gave me the confidence to, to call myself a writer and to call myself a producer um, because I, I organized the whole thing, you know, and I've and it's and I'm proud of it, basically. Jeez, no, you should be. You should be. I mean, yeah. you know, to be in South Africa and then to actually make it into New York, I think that's really remarkable. Jeez, well done, Laura. Yeah, it really was great. It was honestly a dream come true because I'd never been to New York. I'd always dreamed about going. I love, I love Broadway. I love comedy. I love music like jazz. I love. You know, every single movie that I love has been set in New York, you know. So when I went there, I just felt like I was in a dream. It was just so exciting and amazing. And then to actually uh, win an award in New York really did feel pretty awesome. <laughs> it definitely felt cool. Um, and it just gave me the, the motivation and the encouragement to, to make more, which I That's did, amazing. yeah. That's amazing. So, so did you watch some Broadway uh, shows? I did. Ooh, yeah, I did. Nice. I had a great time. <laughs> uh, what's your, what's and your you favorite? And you know, another thing about oh, Broadway yeah. that I've now discovered is mm. that our South African shows are as good, if not better. Because are you for they real? Are. I am 100% for real. You know, you think, oh, Broadway, they're so amazing. And they are amazing, but they're not actually necessarily better than anyone here like i saw a production a few months ago at the theater on the bay and i was completely blown away the, the standard was absolutely world class and i'm very very critical like fairly i'm fairly critical okay. i'm not like overly critical i'm just 
I, I don't say it's good if if it's not good. I'm not gonna. I really I watch like with a critical eye, and um, I was just I'm very proud to see that we really are as good as international people. We really are, and we need to kind of believe that for ourselves because. Mm. But sometimes, you know, you feel like you're not because we're just not necessarily being treated in the same way by the audiences in South Africa or well, who knows. But we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So, like, um, you've been to see, you said that your favorite movies are also in New York. Like, what's your, what's one of your favorite movies? That- oh, gosh. I mean, I'm even just thinking of, like, TV shows like Seinfeld. Um, mm friends you know these like classic sitcoms that were set either set in new york or were actually in new york or like sex in the city for example or mm. all those kind of like girls like these shows that are set in new york about new york and about the people in new york you know just living their lives i've just always loved them um any, like there's so many movies and things that are shot in New York and just walking in the street there, you just feel like you recognize everything, you know? Oh, so would you ever work with like uh, performers or artists in New York? I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. I think, I think, I think, I think they'd love to. I think, I think if people like more and more people knew you, like they'd be like, why are we not working with this? amazing woman like seriously <laughs> i think more and more people just need to know like who you are and what you do and then it's like it's a wrap because like i, I think wish yeah the, i wish the yeah i, think it's I mean that's the thing there's only so much self-promotion you can do you know you need other people to promote you as well so um sometimes you just kind of lose steam a little bit i got you i got you but you gotta keep going you gotta keep going. <laughs> you just gotta keep going. I mean, like even with Chin Up getting onto Showmax, I really thought, okay, cool, more people are gonna see Chin Up now, and like it will get more publicity, more interest. It will lead to more stuff, and it did a little bit, but they didn't help me in terms of marketing at all. You know, at all. And if they had even just a little bit, I really think it would have. It would have just gained more traction because that's okay. all that most of the stuff kind of comes down to is marketing that's like what i've realized as well marketing 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 and that's the thing like for any production you do you also have to then have a marketing budget because mm. otherwise you make a thing and it may be very very good but if you can't tell people about it a lot of people about it then no one's gonna see it or not enough people and then it, it won't like be a success because it hasn't been seen by enough people. Yeah. But that's all just marketing. If you think about anything, like why do you want to watch a movie? It's because you've seen stuff about it on online and on posters and on interviews and you like you see it all the time. It's just like telling you, go go watch this thing and then you watch it. Otherwise mm. you won't. You won't know about it. Yeah, that's so, so true. Marketing needs its own budget. Okay. okay. So 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 with chin up like um are you still producing uh, more seasons? Are we on season four, season five? Where are we? Yeah, I could, I could in theory, but I kind of felt like that was done. Like that, I have other characters and stories to oh, okay. tell now. Like I could always revisit it, um, mm. but I just kind of didn't feel inclined. I just felt like I want to do other things now. I want to tell other stories, but I could always okay. come back to it. If there was an interest, if there was a budget, if there was someone that's like, "Hey, I want to buy a show. Let's make another four seasons," I'd be like, "Absolutely," you know. <laughs> See, but I kind yeah. of wanted to try another another thing. And what about uh, so Showmax is still like uh, television based, if I'm correct. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it's a streaming service like Netflix, uh, oh, but okay. it's not as big. It's in South Africa and Africa and um parts of the world like some in asia i'm not sure exactly of all the regions but it's it is not just africa oh, okay wow but that i don't think it's cool. america i don't think it's america at all okay 
And um, what about like, is it possible to sort of produce like online sort of, um, or is producing online, does that feel like, you know, that's a step below sort of, you know, the television formats and the show max, uh, Netflix formats? I don't know. How do, how, how do you feel as an artist about that? Chin Up is a web series. It actually is a short little, it's a web series that then got on to show max. Um, okay. I don't see anything wrong with doing with doing like web series or or films for just online, especially because so many people don't even watch TV anymore. Like we're all watching things on our phones and our computers. Um, True. even like TV, we're watching on our laptops or whatever. Um, so I don't see that as a step back. As long as again, like as long as it's just got the budget for marketing and the budget for a good production uh then absolutely okay and like you know throughout your career what's been sort of like for you the best project that you've ever worked on where you're like oh man you know that project was so amazing <laughs> you know whether it was like your own project or a project that was you know someone else's project um gosh i really have loved all the things i've worked on and they've all been amazing but I suppose like when I did Emotional Creature it was a play uh, we did it at the Baxter Theatre in Cape Town and we did it at the UJ Theatre in Joburg and we were supposed to go other places but anyway um, it was an incredible incredible production because it was Eve Ensler who wrote the Vagina Monologues and she's like this incredible activist feminist amazing person and she wrote emotional creature and um it was just like monologues from different girls around the world sharing their stories of kind of growing up and each one very very different and um and it was just so so well received it was unbelievable i mean because eve ensler is who she is she's like friends with these huge sensational stars like charlize Theron. we had charlize yeah. Theron and sean penn were in the audience the one night Whoa, um, yeah. that's crazy. They came, they came backstage, and I'm so glad I didn't know they were in the audience until it was finished because I wouldn't have been able to concentrate. I was like, Jeez. oh, it was insane. So we have a photo with them backstage at the Baxter Theatre. Um, we had all these incredible people come and watch the show. Um, it was honestly insane and amazing. So that was definitely a highlight. And another thing, I mean, I learned about feminism doing that show. Before that, I thought that feminism was like only for like old hippies who didn't want to wear bras. And that's <laughs> obviously not the case at all. Um, okay. Now I know that it just means equal rights ultimately for women mm -hmm. and men, um, equal pay, equal rights, respect, all that. Um, but I didn't know that. So that was a huge educational experience for me. Um, and then I loved working on Tully's Wedding Diary, which is a comedy on Showmax. And there's three seasons of that as well. And that's just a comedy. My favorite thing is comedy. So I love doing comedy. Yeah, you, 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 you're pretty good at comedy. That's for sure. <laughs> I think it's just like natural for you. Okay. Wow. That's really, really cool. You know, like I have a lot of students and they're curious about, you know, just like they're curious about more than school. Like sometimes they feel like, you know, school's like, yeah, and then they, you know, they want to know about the real world. And, and so they're curious, some of them are curious about the world of being a performer. And so, you know, I always ask myself, when's a good time for, um, you know, someone who's young who maybe wants to do what exactly what you're doing? Like, do they first need to, you know, reach a certain age? Do they need to attend university? um before they can start making work because like i feel like you've been making work and you know you're not waiting for opportunity you, you you're just going like when can someone who's maybe a teenager or pre-teenager when can they start doing that or do they have to first grow up no they definitely can start telling their stories immediately i mean the stories of teenagers is fascinating and very popular at the moment on netflix as well if you if you notice there's a lot of stories about teenagers and teenage shows. Um, so definitely, I think, I suppose it's just important to just be safe and careful uh, in terms of like putting yourself out there, 
you know, you need to just maybe have some adult supervision. Um, but definitely start writing your stories, use your phone to film them, start practicing because as as you do it, you learn and you, you find out what you need and what you need to know and then you learn more and then that's the best way to do it. It's really the, the best, best way, better than going to school, better than university um, or even to, you know, intern or, or job shadow or just kind of get a job as an assistant or just to be on set and really get a feel for it or to work in the writer's room or there's so much you can do while you're still at school um, and there's so many courses online that you can take there's so much information on YouTube there's so much information so I really do not think you need to go to university to do it um, but I loved it I loved studying it um, but you don't need it you don't you just need to be I suppose persistent and brave and ready to kind of expose your vulnerable side and, and share your truth and your stories with people. And, and that's it, I guess. <laughs> Easier said than done. Mm-hmm. No, but really the best thing to do is to just start. Just start using your phone, shoot a little thing on your phone. If it's rubbish, don't share it. If it's cool, share it, you know. No pressure. I like uh, I like that. That's practical. I think that's something that you know can, like, young kids can start doing uh, immediately. Um, and mm. so, like, you know, you you you're obviously in the process of making more work. And I'm just curious, like, you know, for people that want to sort of follow you, see some of the work that you've done. Like, do you have like some um, website or some sites or mm-hmm, some pages mm-hmm. that they can view? So you can watch Chin Up. All three seasons are on my website and YouTube. Now my website is www.chinup.co.za. Um, and you can find Chin Up on Instagram. It's Chin Up Daily, Chin underscore up underscore daily. And me, my personal account is Lara Tozeli on Instagram. And um, IMDb and where else would you find me that's probably probably good <laughs> okay awesome awesome yo laura you know i i just want to say thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show and thank you for coming through you really uh, are a blessing and uh, i really appreciate Thanks. your time it's a pleasure it was great to chat to you and reminisce about bits yeah I'm glad yeah I remembered. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I don't think anybody's going to forget you. I think people are still oh. thinking about you like today. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, you, you really made an impact on me. I was like, you know, I'm still like, like every time you came to class, I was like so nervous. I'm like, oh, geez, oh, now I need to, you know, up my game here. I need to try and do something. I don't know. You're always that kind of uh, individual that just, you know, but it was cool because like, even though you were like, you know, super excellent, you're still approachable. Like normally people who are like that, it's like, hey, I'm the queen, you know, bow down, <laughs> kiss the ring. But you didn't have that uh, energy, you know, so that was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. I think people like that get uh, knocked down at some point, one way or another. You can't be like that in this world. Not for long. That's true. That's true. Laura, thank you so much. As a mom, I really want to say thank you, you know, uh, for Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure yeah. talking to you. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing you smash three hundred million dollar production. Oh gosh, thank you. Yeah, Manifest no, no, you deserve it. You definitely deserve thank it. Thank you. I'm looking forward, Laura. Cool, Chris. Enjoy, Have a good enjoy day. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. You too. All right, bye-bye. bye bye. Bye. Oh, let me compose myself, guys. That was Laura. I told you, I told you that we got the best of the best. Oh my gosh. I can now breathe, I can now rest, I can relax. Well, I can't, I need to go to work, but oh my god, guys, I can't believe we had Laura on the show. Yo! You guys don't understand. This woman is on another level. Like, oh my gosh. I can't believe we had Laura on the show. Thank you, Chief. I'm a believer. Guys, I'm telling you, all things are possible. All things are possible. 
you're going to see Lara um, this uh, award uh, you know that she's received in New York that's just the beginning I'm telling you guys like when 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 when, when you go and watch the the you know the, the the shows that she's given us you're gonna see for yourself uh this lady's on another level guys so guys go check out laura check out her shows um you know if you know some directors some serious directors some serious producers some serious performers definitely get them to network with laura because she's the one i'm telling you guys she is the one she's gonna break free she's gonna set you free from the matrix so uh thank you so much laura i really appreciate it and guys enjoy the rest of your day hey i gotta go work damn